Good morning. morning. Come on, good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Detroit Unity Temple. Before we begin our service, I'd like to share with you one of our speakers, speaker for the day, had a chance to be with, with Rhonda Walker. And I want to show you this video of her as Rhonda Walker speak about, speaks about her talent and her energy. Show the video real quickly. Look on life. Experiencing bullying as a child, it really dug a ditch into my self esteem at one point, and it almost discouraged me from actually pursuing the level of achievement that I wanted to pursue. A part of my upbringing in Detroit was it was quite chaotic at times, but it gave me a sense of resilience and strength. It was just me and my grandmother in my house growing up. My grandmother, she inspired me to have high ambitions, she would work day in and day out. So a lot of the times I would be home by myself. I started off as a very shy kid because I intuitively knew that somehow I was different from the other kids and other kids let it be known, right? So I stayed to myself. I found my tribe later on in the Rhonda Walker Foundation at age 12. And that is when I knew it is okay for me to be my unique self. One of my favorite events was Winter Wonderland. We went sledding. They had us on these motorcycles that could fly through snow somehow. <laughs> Just having that type of fun, that outgoingness. This is something I wasn't exposed to in Detroit, going all the way to northern Michigan. Dress for Success is a Rhonda Walker Foundation event where all the girls are given gift cards and we go to a shopping mall and we purchase our own business outfit and beforehand they give us a presentation of what encompasses the best business outfit i won the overall best dress amongst everyone and i bought these pants with a blazer to go with it i decided that i wanted to attend oakland university i chose to study psychology because i wanted to study the brain process and how it is influenced throughout life experiences i would always tell my grandma i need a sister right i'm here by myself no other girls to play with i want a sister and lo and behold you know, I ran into a sisterhood. Our focus is the kids, but the impact that we're having on the parents and parenting, sometimes you don't always know that. The Thomas family, they had three daughters come through our program. What we didn't know is what they were going through at the time, what struggles that they were dealing with raising their daughters. I would say that the Rhonda Walker Foundation did change the trajectory of our girls' life. as she come forward to talk. But once again, welcome to Detroit Unity Temple where the opportunities and challenge of living meet the awesome power of God. For truly we know we say thank you for joining us via the internet or being in person with us right now. Let me share something with you that's gonna be so fabulous and so unique. March, as many of you know, is Women History Month yes. as well as Reading Month. You can give a hand for that. Absolutely. So we're going to turn this program over to the women of our church. And I'd like to introduce our person who's going to bring to you and to all of us the daily words. So let us welcome Ms. Tracy Vickers Hamilton. Good morning, Detroit Unity. Morning. Good morning. Today's word is dominion. The affirmation for today is, I claim dominion and direct the course of my life. I claim dominion and direct the course of my life. Now the daily word. While I may not be able to control what happens in my life, I am always free to determine how I will respond. 
through my divine faculty of dominion, I decide what to think, what to say, and how to act. If a thought of fear or powerlessness arises, I remember all the wisdom, understanding, and strength of God are within me. Whether I'm organizing my day or moving forward after making a life-altering decision, the principle of dominion is always mine to claim. Knowing this, I move through life with quiet confidence. I am secure in myself and in the knowledge that I am a divine being. I claim dominion and feel my life expand into a field of limitless possibility and potential. The scripture for today is Psalms 8 and 6. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. Now let us welcome Christoria Collins for our mission congregational statement. Good morning again, Detroit Unity. Good morning. Good morning. Let us affirm our congregational mission statement together. Our mission and goal is to prayerfully demonstrate the teachings of Jesus Christ through the study and practice of truth principles. Now let us affirm our vision statement for the Living Temple together. We, the spiritual community of Detroit Unity, joyously carry out the vision of renewal and prosperity for ourselves, our spiritual home, and our world. This week's food for thought is Never be limited by other people's limited imaginations. Mae Jemison. All right. And if this is your first time joining Detroit Unity Temple, we welcome you and encourage you to join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. for our in-person service. Be sure you sign our guest book located in the lobby. If you are unable to come to in-person service, watch us anytime at youtube.com forward slash Detroit Unity. Now we'll have a hymn by Gwen and Charles Scales. When we wake up in the morning, one of the first things we say is thank you.
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And thank you to Gwen and Charles for that beautiful song. So amazing. Now let us affirm our statement of truth together. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. Now let us say our prosperity thought of the week together. God is blessing me now with peace, health, prosperity, and the joy of living. Amen. Let us now prepare for our morning meditation by reflecting on the goodness of God and by singing the Lord's Prayer. Thank you. As we begin this meditation, I invite you to come into a comfortable seating position with your spine straight, yet relaxed, and feet flat on the floor. Closing our eyes, take a deep breath in through your nose and a deep breath out through your nose. A deep breath in through your nose and a deep breath out through your nose. 
Breathing in only the love of God and with a deep breath out only the love of God. Another deep breath in, becoming still and aware of your breath. Becoming aware of your body and how you feel in this present moment. A deep breath in through your nose and a deeper breath out through your nose. I ask you to think about a time where you were anxious and you really saw no way. And as you were still in this moment, you saw God's work. You saw God's miracle flow through your life and in that situation, in that present moment, you felt God's awareness. In the stillness of this moment, I am peace. With each breath, I draw upon divine peace. I am one with and now demonstrate the power of peace. Enfolding all my concerns in a cushion of calm, I think peaceful thoughts and hold peaceful intentions. My body, mind, and spirit are centered on divine peace. As we deeply breathe in and deeply breathe out, I want us to awaken the feelings of gratitude and thankfulness for our ability to breathe. Our ability to breathe is a foundational demonstration of God's grace. The ability to breathe in the love of God and breathe out the love of God in each present moment In this stillness, we say thank you and awaken the feeling of gratitude in this very moment. One with divine mind, I realize infinite potential. As all things are possible, when I realize oneness with God, in prayer, I seek insight, understanding, and spiritual knowledge about my hopes and dreams. I rise into a state of understanding, poised, confident in the promise of fulfillment. In this very moment, we understand that everything and anything is possible with and through the love of God. All of divine life is present where I am. I shine the light of divine life throughout my body, blessings and strengthening every structure and space, every atom and system. All of God and all of divine life is fully present within and around me. I celebrate the wholeness of divine life in my body. God is infinitely abundant and omnipresent. The life force is always flowing in, through, and around us. And as we close this meditation, I invite you to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, as we breathe in the love of God and breathe out the love of God. Slowly and gently open your eyes. Thank you. Now we will prepare with a song selection from Gwen and Charles Scales. Give us an opportunity that we're waiting to come into the temple. 
says we Welcome everyone. So good to see you. And then your response is, it's so good to be seen. <laughs> Love will save 
Yes, yes, love will save the day. It is a pleasure and an honor for me to introduce this beautiful young lady today. She is an amazing young lady. She's gonna kick off our Women's Month. She, is attending, she has been attending Detroit Unity Temple uh, her entire life. Her grandmother has been bringing her here, yes. And uh, her journey to spiritual enlightenment and uh, personal growth has been amazing. She is a current member of the new Detroit Unity Optimist Club, as I am. And she was a past winner of our Optimist Club Oratorical Contest for the state of Michigan in 2019. She won for the state of Michigan, yes. Very proud, very proud. She's 21 years old and she is a dynamic young woman who strives to use her influence to inspire others to live up to their full potential of um, their personal, um, she does personal mentoring ship. Um, she's, uh, she's getting a fine education right now. She's demonstrating healthy practices in her day-to-day -day life. And this April, she's expected to graduate from the Honors College of Oakland University with her bachelor's degree in psychology. <laughs> yes, awesome, awesome, awesome. So Detroit Unity, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome our phenomenal woman here. A beautiful, phenomenal woman, Phoenicia Long. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Thank you so much, Tracy, for that wonderful introduction. Um, Tracy, she always gives me life with her upbeat, positive energy and just how she lights up the room. So I want to take time to appreciate you for that. And also thank you, Reverend Geis, for um, entrusting me with your congregation with this sermon that I've prepared for you. Speaking is one of my gifts. And... I am just so excited to share the knowledge and information that I have with you all today. The title of my message is To the Women Who Passed the Baton. And here's where I got that title from. Growing up, I would watch the Olympics with my extended family in Alabama. And that was our favorite pastime. After we wore ourselves out during the day, we could relax for the evening. We will watch the Olympics. And I have an athletic background myself. I played volleyball in high school. But recently, I became fascinated with the concept of a relay race. And how many, how many of you guys done track, like or track or any sport in high school? OK, so um, you may know how a relay race goes. Lately, I've begun to think of a relay race as very similar to life, right? One player is running. One person is running their own race. They have a goal in mind. They have an objective that they want to accomplish. But their teammate behind them has to pass the baton to them in order to fully take off, right? And they're not looking just straight toward the finish line. They're looking to pass the baton on to someone else so they can get to the finish line. And in a successful relay race, Every team member has the baton get passed to them or else the team will lose the race. So today I would like to highlight women throughout history, the 20th century and the 21st century, who have passed the baton to us and given us such strength and such leadership and such wisdom that would allow us to continue on and fulfill our purpose in life. The first woman I would like to highlight is a woman by the name of Marion Croak. Now, I am upset <laughs> that I did not learn about this woman until recently, that our school systems did not teach us about her. So here's how we'll, we'll start that off. How many of you all video chatted or called a, um, a family member this past week? Okay, cool. All right, so I think that's just about everybody in this room. Marianne Croak is the reason why we're able to do that. She invented this technology called the Voice Over Internet Protocol, which allows people to video call through Zoom, Skype, Google Meet, FaceTime, and other technologies that we use pretty much in our everyday life. And 
this woman is phenomenal because when she recounts her story, she predicted 40 years ago, back in 1982, when she worked for AT&T, that this technology would come about even when there was no sight of it anywhere. So she, she sat in this boardroom full of powerful white men and she basically told them, look, the wired technology is cool or whatnot, but we have to step our game up if we're, if we're going to keep up in the realm of innovativeness and really pushing the mark forward when it comes to this new technology because this is what will come in the next few decades and we have to stay on top of the trends if we're going to be relevant. And these men gave her a very, very tough time. They're, who is this lady talking about? Uh, get, get, her, get her off this, get, off, get her out of the company, right? Not knowing her vision for the company, not knowing her vision for humanity, really. And she recalled being so terrified after that meeting of losing her job because people did not want to adjust to her genius, basically. And here's the first appeal I want to make to women. When God gives you an imagination, take it seriously. When God gives you, yes. Every vision matters. Every vision that is in your head, it matters, right? Because you do not know what could come about from it. You do not know who you can inspire. You do not know what impact it can have on the world eventually. Marion Croak, she had over 200 patents, invention patents, that were geared towards this cell phone. Back from 1982, right? So you can imagine over 200 patents that were geared towards revolutionizing technology, right? And despite the adversity she faced, she is now the vice president of engineering at Google today at the age of 67. And she spends her idle time traveling the country, inspiring other young women to pursue careers in technology. Amen. And that's um, a worthwhile testimony. Speaking of adversity, another woman I would like to highlight is Jessica Matthews. And this woman is a trailblazer also. She invented this soccer ball that when you kick it, it stores kinetic energy and it creates electricity, it creates light. And here's how that in invention came about. She is a Nigerian woman, um, Nigerian American, and she would travel back and forth to Nigeria for family events or whatnot. But every time she went, she would notice that the children in the villages, they would go home from school with no power, no electricity, no real infrastructure that would allow them to really thrive. And these children were brilliant, right? They had such promising futures, but they did not have the resources that would allow them to be catapulted into their greatness. Well, she knew that soccer was the number one sport in the world, going back to sports. Um, she knew that soccer was the number one sport in the world. And she combined that with her knowledge of technology and sustainability and renewable resources. And she came up with this invention that literally revolutionized how we see energy today. And today she is the founder um, and CEO of a company called Uncharted Power, which is today bringing sustainable energy, non-renewable energy to disadvantaged communities. So now our children have a promising future, right, instead of being confined to where they are and what's already available. So that is um, Jessica Matthews. <laughs> and she's under the age of 30, by the way. <laughs> yep, so speaking of a promising future, the last lady I would like to highlight is a woman by the name of Jasmine Brown, who had very rough beginnings. Jasmine Brown always had a passion for medicine. And this is why I encourage a lot of, of, of us young women to go into any career where like, with like STEM and the humanities, because this area is very much needed of support and women who can trailblaze, is what I'm saying. But 
Jasmine Brown, she always had a passion for medicine, but when she was younger, she was always torn down by her peers. She was told that she was too slow to amount to anything. And when she did get into medical school for her undergraduate degree, she was told that she only got into medical school because she was black, because of affirmative action, and because you know people had pity for her or whatnot, right? Now, this young woman, she had a 4.0 GPA. She was a student athlete. She was involved in many organizations. And, right, she was the president of many student-led organizations that were geared towards service. So this brings me to my third appeal for women. True confidence comes from within. It should not come from outside people who are not headed where you are headed. That is so important to remember because when we believe it, it becomes true. It's when you believe it, that's when it becomes true and then it starts to shape. It starts to shape and mold how we feel about ourselves, right? So always believe in yourself, always have that confidence because God's plan for your life is too important to allow people's negativity to take you under and allow you to stop doing what you're doing. And all of these women, each and every one of these women displayed a level of confidence in their purpose that was so paramount to them becoming who they are to this very day. So I would like to, you know, really just impart into people um, the same level of achievement that you may have accomplished yourself, pass that on to another young girl, because you may never know what she need in her life. And I'm excited to say that Jasmine Brown, she's on her way to becoming a doctor, right, at the University of Pennsylvania as a medical student. And she is working towards taking care of the health disparities in the black community that affect us so drastically. And this past January, she purchased her first book. It's called Twice as Hard. She talked about the women who had to work twice as hard to get the recognition that they were worthy of. And in the future, she's gonna be breaking those barriers so it would not be um, as, a, as tumultuous of you know, an endeavor for us to achieve all that we want to achieve. So I understand the reality of the world we live in. Every young girl does not have the same amount of people pouring into them like I did, right? This church has poured into me so much, I can't even put into words how grateful I am for this church. But every young girl does not have that. And we have to be wary of that. But there are also women in this church who have had what it took to achieve what they've achieved and to accomplish great things. They serve with their whole heart, but their light goes unnoticed so quickly. So today, I would like to take a moment and publicly pay homage to the women in this church who have made me the woman I am today. I would first like to thank my grandmother. <laughs> Grandmother, you sacrificed everything you had and did not have to raise me, and you refused to let the vision of this church die with you. Um, for that, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart, and while you are here, I give you your flowers. I would like to honor Miss Henrietta, right? She's the first woman who took me in in her nursery as a baby. And she, yes, I was that baby screaming, by the way, in case y'all hear about me, I was that baby screaming. But uh, she took me in and she touched me with her compassion in such a way that she made this church my spiritual home. So for that, Miss Henrietta, if you're listening, um, thank you from the bottom of my heart. While you are here, I give you your flowers. I would like to thank Miss Dorothy. She was my children's church teacher, and she would not let me leave church until she told me, baby, Jesus loves you, this I know, for your Bible tells you so, <laughs> right? 
and she had the power to calm a room full of nosy children with her hymn. I didn't know how she did it, but rest in peace. May you continue to rest in peace, Miss Dorothy. <laughs> Miss Elise. Um, she is known for her enthusiasm for life. She was known for her enthusiasm for life, and she was the lady who would dress up in that Easter Bunny costume on Easter Sunday and then help chase the kids around, you know, to help find scavenger hunt eggs. Yes, I remember Miss Elise. May you continue to rest in peace. Thank you for all you've poured into me. Thank you for all you poured into Detroit Unity. Thank you to my YU sponsors, Ms. Latia Porter and Ms. Joanne Taylor, for always speaking kind words into me and never invalidating my dreams for what I wanted to do in this world. You always taught me, you always inspired me, um, and from the depths of my heart, I say thank you. While you are here, I give you your flowers. Thank you to Ms. Verna Calhoun, who was my Uniteens teacher back when I was 12 and somehow thought I had this world figured out. And every time I attended your class, I would come to the root awakening that I did not have everything figured out. Um, thank you for serving with your wonderful husband, Mr. Thomas Calhoun. While you guys are here, I give you your flowers. <laughs> and I would like to thank Ms. Alma Greer you touch me with your style, but you inspire me with your wisdom. You always have such positive and uplifting, uplifting energy towards the youth in an age where youth are more likely to be torn down by elders rather than be lifted up. But not here, not at this church. Ms. Elma Greer, I thank you. While you are here, I give you your flowers. Yes. And I honor the village of women here at this church who have poured into me greatly because without them, I'm not who I am, right? So thank you to the women who passed the baton on to me, essentially. I will use what I've learned and what I've come to know to empower and inspire those coming after me because that's what this race of life is all about. Life is a relay race, truly. And without your wisdom, I would not know where to go. So I would just like to say that um, everything that happened to me happened for a reason. And I know that because of what each and every one of you have done for me to make my life truly amazing and what it is today. I will use my imagination, my God-like imagination um, to the best to do good and not evil. I will use my adversity to fuel me because it truly is my why. It truly is what made me who I am. And I will walk in true confidence enough to know that anything I can achieve is possible. I will be confident enough to have actual humi humility, but not live in fear of what the future holds of me, right? And I would like to end this sermon with a quote, with a scripture. My favorite scripture from the Bible is from Pro Proverbs. Yes, I said it, the Proverbs 31 woman. <laughs> All right. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her, her husband also, and he praises her. My daughters have done well, he says, but you excel at them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Detroit Unity, thank you so much um, 
for everything you've done for me, everything you've poured into me and to the women. Thank you for honoring. Thank you for loving. Thank you for caring. And thank you for honoring and uplifting every black man in your life and in your presence. Because these men, they show, um, they show up in a way that dignifies not only themselves, but everyone. And they have so much weight that they don't speak of because of what the world sees of them and what the world has done to them. So for that, I want to honor you. And that concludes my sermon. She was phenomenal. Did I not say that? Give, her, give it up one more time. Ooh, this beautiful young lady. Oh my gosh. She is amazing. Amazing. Yes. Bred and born, right? Right here in unity. Okay? Okay? Raised up in unity, okay? Yes. So now let us prepare to be blessed and to bless our offering. Um, I want you to... Um, Get your ties or your offerings out, place them in your left hand, covering with your right, and affirm our prosperity prayer. Divine love in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and thank you, God, all that I receive. Amen, amen. Now, while our ushers come forward, let us enjoy another beautiful selection by Gwen and Charles Gales. All right. Thank you.
Charles, I love it, because sisters are doing it for ourselves. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So we, I would like to um, take this time right now to bless our offering. We give thanks to all that God, all the good that God is. And for this offering, we bless it, knowing that God's abundance flows freely within us and around us. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Um, announcements for today. I guess I'm doing that too. <laughs> so good morning again. The 6 p.m. Monday night prayer circle will be on keeping a true Lent during the Lenten season. So you can sign up for that at DetroitUnity.com and click class keeping a true Lent 2023 with the option to receive the Zoom link. March is Women in History Month. Detroit Unity Temple would like to acknowledge the women within our congregation for their contributions and achievements within the last year, personal, spiritual, or business. Um, acknowledgement forms are in the lobby, so if you'd like to nominate one of our very own phenomenal women in the congregation to be honored, the deadline for that submission is March 19th. Next month, our guest speaker will be our very own Letitia McCree. Yes. So that is going to be awesome, 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 because she is a fired up lady. Yes, she is. And I know she is going to bring us some powerful, powerful, powerful words. The first quarter meeting has been moved. The new date is next Sunday, March the 12th, immediately following the service. The Treasure Chest Bookstore is hosting a series of pop-up stores this month, featuring women entrepreneurs from our congregation. Um, it's, of course, it's Women's History Month, so we're going to do that. Today, March the 5th, we have Alita Moody. Shop with Alita Moody and score some paparazzi fashion jewelry. Let paparazzi jewelry make you shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> All right, on March 12th, next Sunday, Avon Products, our very own Jacqueline Holt is your consultant. She'll be in the bookstore. On March 19th, we have Rum Cakes by uh, Matthews and Matthews Eats, which is one of our very own right here, too. Yes. On March 26th, Gladiator of Health Cafe vendor T. Empress Monica will be here with her teas in the bookstore. Begin the path to membership by joining the What is Unity class. Class will be held Sundays, March the 12th through April the 2nd at 12 noon in the Fillmore Chapel. This is a four-week in-person session. Recommended books are the Holy Bible, of course, the Revealing Word, and the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. All are available in our bookstore, uh, the Detroit Unity Temple Treasure Chest Bookstore. Legacy of Literacy presents a woman, a women in history book study on Sunday, March 26th at 12, from 12 to 2 p.m. Featured books are Michelle Obama, The Light We Carry, April Ryan, Black Woman Will Save the World, and Stacey Abrams, While Justice Sleeps. The books are all available in our Detroit Unity Treasure Chest Bookstore. Now, right now, we have a special, special, special presentation by our very own Mama Alma Greer. Good morning, Detroit Unity. You know the drill. Read, read, read. The more you read, the better you read. So read, read, read. And after Phoenicia gave her talk, I had picked out some books to give her, you know, 
because I give books. Yeah. Uh, I, I would give my grandchildren books, and they would look at my gift, the way it was wrapped, and they'd put it aside because they wanted to play with the toys, you yeah. know. But I, I'm giving her change scenes by, you know who? Amanda Gorman. Yeah. You know the young lady that spoke at Joe Biden's inauguration? Oh, she, oh, you're going to love this. And then I picked out Little Dreamers. It's women around the world, women that, you know, I had never heard of. Mm -hmm. And I was mad because I hadn't heard of Catherine, Catherine Johnson on Hidden Figures. I hadn't heard of any of those women until I saw the movie. Yes. Okay. And I was, I was angry because I didn't know about them. I'm a daughter of the South. I sat at the back of the bus for the third, fourth, and fifth grade to, to go to my school after passing the white schools where the bus stopped in front of those uh, students' school and let them out, and I had to transfer. So, you know, you don't let anybody turn you around. So this is Little Dreamers and, oh, so many visionaries. And then after you talk, uh, Tracy, I, I was going to give you this one, but we have to uh, get you one from the bookstore. <laughs> It's called Black Women Will Save the World. Yeah. And we have evidence that we have Phoenicia, we have Christoria, we have Tracy. Come on, stand up. Yeah. Come on, come up here. Black, black women, uh, and, uh, and uh, Betty's going to give you uh, a book, but here's a bag to put it in, Legacy of Literacy. Okay. Thank you. Here's one for you. Thank you. Yeah. And one for you. And Betty saw that I was going to give them a bag. And she said, I want one, too. So I'm giving her one. And my friend Janet Jones has the Source Bookstore. And remember this. She says, eat, sleep, and read. <laughs> so if we run out of books, if Connie Vickers runs out of the copies of the books that we, we've mentioned for our books study, you can go to the Source Bookstore on Cass, and an African-American female, she started that bookstore many years ago in her house. So, and then she moved to a place on, uh, I think it was, what's the name of this? Mac, and then she moved on Cass in a new facility. So we want to support her business. Amazon is kind of putting, putting a strain on her. Uh, business, so let us go to that place. But I, I Mary McLeod Bethune is, in, is an educator, and Betty and I are retired. Uh, and she said, if I have a legacy to leave my people, it is my philosophy of living and serving. I pray that my philosophy may be helpful to those who share my vision of, of a world of peace. And we need a vision of a world of peace. And she, you take these phones out when you get home, and 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 what do you say? Google. <laughs> what? Google it. Oh, Google it. Google Mary McLeod Bethune's last will and testament. And she said, "I leave you finally." a responsibility to our young people. And Detroit Unity, haven't we been responsible with our young people? <laughs> Give yourself a pat on the back. And I could go on for days, but this is National Reading Month. It was established by the National Education Association to encourage and motivate all of us to read every day. So you go forth and do what? Read, 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 and go to the bookstore. Connie Vickers is waiting for you to buy one of these books. Michelle Obama's book, Ryan, April Ryan, April Ryan's book, and, and Stacey Abrams. Abrams' book. Those are some bad women, I think. Yes. And you are too. God bless you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. More books. <laughs> You know how much Mama Alma loves March is Reading Month. And in support of public schools in Michigan celebrating March is Reading Month, today I'm going to donate 
100 of my children's books to the Detroit Unity Treasure Chest Bookstore. When you buy these books, A Cinderella Story, A Tale of Forgiveness, and A Sleeping Beauty Story, Another Tale of Forgiveness. So it's a different twist than the traditional themes we grew up with. Most of the proceeds from the sale of these books in our bookstore will go to the children's church. So I want you to think about buying these books, share them with your children, neighbors, or give them as gifts. So today, in honor of the children's church and children everywhere, because the books that I wrote are dedicated to children everywhere, I present these two copies to our illustrious speaker today, Phoenicia Long. Thank you. If, if there are any authors in the house, would you please come up front? If you've written a book, and uh, you're an author. We'll do it later, yeah. Yeah. We're out of time, Mama. We're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, authors stand up. And Cherokee, your mother, wrote a book. Are you here, Cherokee? No, she's not here. She's not here. Your mother wrote a book, and our illustrious minister wrote a book. Yeah. Yeah. Reverend Carol wrote a book. And, and if you've written a book, you know, just stand up so we can clap for you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <All> you. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Mama Elma. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to continue on with our uh, announcements. <laughs> that was awesome, awesome, awesome. Pastor Geis will lead Lessons in Truth at six week in person class Tuesday, April 11th through May 16th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. in the Margaret Wood Auditorium. Detroit Temple, Detroit Unity Temple presents Alexander Zanjic. Yes, I love him. Oh my God. He will be in concert here Saturday, April 22nd, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. So stay tuned for more information, okay? I can't wait, he is so awesome, so awesome. Detroit Unity Temple and the new Detroit Unity Optimist Club present The Play Sweat at the Detroit Repertory Theater on Sunday, May 21st, 2023 at 2 p.m. Tickets are $25 and are available through any DUT board member, new Detroit Unity Optimist Club member, if you need a ticket, <laughs> and the Detroit Unity Temple ticket booth right outside across the hall. Do you feel the need for a little extra prayer today? Join the prayer chaplains in the Fred Robinson family room right behind you there after today's service and come get prayed up. Our ongoing class, Prosperity, with Reverend David Stubbs is on Zoom every Thursday from 6 p.m. to 7.30 to 7.30 p.m. Sign up at DetroitUnity.com to receive the Zoom link. The book for the class is also available in our very own bookstore. The Children's Church will be open on the second and the fourth Sundays of each month. So next Sunday, bring the babies. Family Caregiver Support Group is held the second Thursday of each month from 1 to 3 p.m. and a second session from 6 to 8 p.m. So please register with Marilyn Lawson at 313 Two eight nine nine six seven two. The next sessions are Thursday, March the 9th. That's this coming Thursday. Again, March is National Reading Month, as Mother Alma just told us. The Detroit Unity would like to recognize our talented authors on March the 26th. If you have written or published a book, uh, please provide a copy of your work to the office so that we can display it in the Treasure Chest Bookstore. The men of Detroit Unity will have a meeting immediately following service on Sunday, April 2nd in the Margaret Wood Auditorium. If you'd like to become a member of the Men of Unity, please attend that meeting. 
if you have a birthday or an anniversary that you are, that's coming up in April, go to dutreception at gmail.com before 9.30 a.m. on March the 27th. Put those names in so you can be um, recognized. I would be remiss if I did not bring Phoenicia back up and give her a wholehearted Detroit Unity blessing and thanking her for her beautiful message that she gave us today. So could everybody stand? We're just gonna give her a Unity blessing. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This phenomenal young woman. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so we're gonna rub our hands together, get all that love, get all that love. And we're gonna say to Phoenicia, we love you. We love you. We bless you. And we, we appreciate you. you. And we behold the Christ in you. We love 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 you. You are beautiful. Beautiful being. Yes. Oh. Now. Reverend Guys, did you have something else to say? No, go ahead. No? All right. All right. Well, Reverend Guys and Reverend Dave, you guys can bring up our birthdays, our anniversaries, yeah. and any other things you guys have to say. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Let's give Tracy a hand. Wow. Hasn't this been a fabulous service, Reverend David? Definitely, definitely fabulous. You know, we hope that you really see how we have kicked off Women History Month. And have we done it well? Yes. And right now, it's time for that special occasion. If you are having a birthday in the month of March, please come on down. Yeah. If you're having a birthday in the month of March, come on down. Bring all these Pisces and Aries together. <laughs> I don't see any names up there. We got some names up there? I may not be, but we'll just... Well... Give them a mic so Give Okay. Can someone come down and give them a mic so they can see? Oh, okay. There we go. Testing, testing, testing. Good morning. My name is... A my name is Ashanti Kenyatta Webb, all otherwise known as Miss Sunshine, and my birthday is March the 22nd. Yeah. I want to promote the bookstore before I get started. We have a, prop, uh, a female entrepreneur in there today, and we'd like you all to stop in and take a look at her wares, uh, special prices, so I'm sure you'd be interested in some of the jewelry. My name is Constance Vickers, and my birthday is March 27th, and I am happy and proud and thankful to be 74 years old. Good morning, Detroit United family. My name is Hawado, and my birthday is my seven, and I will be turning another year older. I'm yeah. grateful. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jacqueline Holt. My birthday is March 13, and I will be turning 74. <laughs> also, my daughter, Jada Filson, her birthday is March 17, St. Patrick's Day. All right. Okay, I, gotta, I gotta add one that wasn't on the screen. Her name is Lauren Scales. And yeah. her, her birthday is March 20. All right. I'm not gonna tell her age, you never can't need to. And I have to add to you because Francine birthday was March the 1st, so. And I'm not going to tell her age because I get in trouble. <laughs> All right, Gwen, take it on. If anyone is having an anniversary, come on down. 
Anniversary. Anyone having an anniversary in the month of March? Or in the stream. Oh, yes. If you're, you're watching us, we want to send that to you as well. Give each other a hug. So I guess we'll do it. There's no one. Let's do it. Yep. Come on. We are just so thankful for this Sunday that we can honor our women of Detroit Unity, that we recognize their strengths, and we are so grateful. We are just so grateful. And as we close, please let us join the Unity Worldwide Ministry everywhere as we pray and believe the following prayer. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that has no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears and anxieties, and we affirm that all is safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. Thank you. One of the things we want to say that was brought up in the announcements is that, please, there's a woman in this congregation that you may feel we need to honor. And on the last Sunday of the month, we will take those names which need to be given to us by the 19th of March, and we want to highlight them collectively on the last Sunday of Women History Month. So think right now who you would like to honor for their contributions in business, in whatever field, or just their own personal support and growth. But we want to make sure that you have a chance to acknowledge those individuals who have made a difference for you as well for the others around you. Amen? Amen. And also I want to say for the What is Unity class that's going to take place, if you've been thinking about becoming a member, we have a great congregation, don't we? Amen. Please see myself or Reverend David so we can take in your information, let you know what you have to do as we go forward, because we are going to grow this congregation. This is the best thing running in the city of Detroit. So we say thank you, God. And as we bring our service to a close, I would like to take, to take a moment to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone that has continued to support us with your tithes and offerings. We truly could not do what we do here without you. Our goal is to go forth and spread the love, light, and teachings of Jesus the Christ. So please remember to invite your friends and family to join our 10 a.m. Sunday service in person or to watch us with playback at 12 noon. And remember, just log on to www.detroitunity.com and click the red start broadcast button. button. Now I want to share with you, let's give all these ladies a hand again for the outstanding effort. And to know that this is just the start. I'm excited. I'm excited, Reverend David. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now let us stand and sing our prayer for protection in our peace song.
I'd like to also honor Chris Story. She just got back from India, spending a month in India to learn and study yoga. Wonderful Sunday, everyone, and please remember to read, read, read.